Welcome back to What RT Noobs with General Disturbance. This is the S-51, it's the Tier 7 Soviet SPG. It's located on the southwest spawn of Outpost and it's under the command of Lin Yarin. And yes, we've seen him on the channel before. Now this is a Tier 7 RT in a Tier 8 game. He's got the 152mm howitzer, which is capable of doing 600 alpha, 38 millimeter pen, and a 7.2 meters burst radius, and between 11 and a half and 23 seconds. Now this is the RT that was actually built on the hull of the KV-1S, but the Soviets could never get it to work, mainly due to the recoil from that howitzer, which is so strong, it would literally shake the hull of the KV-1S to pieces. And so, Despite a numerous testing, it never actually got produced, never got manufactured. They just had prototypes which they tested and then unfortunately just didn't work. And we can see somebody's moving down that road because I just saw something disrupted. Yep, and it's a Chi Ri. Rounds out. Good first shot. 258 hit points and loads of stun assist. And the target's gone down, so he picked up the rest of it as stun assist and we can now see a scorpion who's popped up on the east side of the map behind the tree line oh and he just took a round from our other rt there's another rt on our team it's also an s51 and we got a hit as well so two hits on the same rt and that means the other rt on our team is going to be very very happy indeed because of course that means that he got a load of stun assist Now this RT is, has now replaced the tier seven RT that actually did exist, uh, which was of course the SU-14-1. Of course that RT itself was modified and turned into the SU-14-2. And during the war, during the second world war, the patriotic war, whichever way you want to record it, um, was actually fired from the same place where the Soviet or well, the Russian tank museum is at Kubinka. We hit them. Direct hit right on the engine bay area of the CS-53. So that's a good shot. You can see that long stun has a big effect. It's not only means that they are vulnerable. Oh, we can see one of the RT shots actually hit the front plate of the Scorpion. There's a yellow mark there that's indicating the impact point. We don't know who actually got that impact, but certainly two of them did. Now, looking over the other side of the battlefield, Limran's found a IS-3 side-scraping on a, a building. In fact, he's reverse side-scraping, actually, funnily enough. Rounds out. It landed short. It was within the blast radius, 120 hit points. One of the good things about this RT is the fire rate. It does fire rather quickly. Standard reload, 23.97 seconds. And with the uh, with the um, uh, the crew that Lin Yaren's managed to get together, he's actually capable of doing 19.64. So he has reduced it by four seconds. Due to just behind that building, that's one of the new Japanese heavies. Awful lot of those came in on 1.23.1. Rounds out. Well, he did get stunned, but he didn't get uh, damage. You can see one of the shells hit the rear of the IS-3. And I think that might be from our teammate in the other S-51. Over on this side of the battlefield, the enemy have come up against a bit of a, um, a roadblock here. The Leo is having difficulty getting around the corner because there's a T-25-2 and another tank on our team just around the corner. So we're going to try and persuade the Comet not to come around the corner. Oh, that was good. 222 hit points on the Comet. Oh, he's not happy. That's That was actually a frontal plate hit, I think. So not good for him. Well, we can see the CS-53's decided to go around and outflank that corner and try and make a dash towards our guys. It's an SU-130PM, the other tank. 
and unfortunately he's managed to get just to the other side of the slope and the leos joined him but i think that was the s51 again working with us now it can help a great deal if you mark the targets by putting the rescue all over them press the t key tells them your teammate which one you're going for oh direct hits into the side again of the leo the cs53 went down he was taken out by the p43 tour on our team meanwhile the comet was taken out by the su 130 pm and the leo goes down which means and he was stunned at the time which means now we've got a load of stun assist and we're just about a thousand hit points of actual damage and over a thousand of stun assist with 257 of assistance. Now, the enemy team seems to be pushing our guys back on this corner. I say seem, but it, it, it might not be that in the end because you can see here that we have got our guy around the corner there. The Besante is assaulting our P43 Tur. And Besante, well, that's tier eight, and the Tur is tier seven. And he's pushing that to into more danger. And the tour has taken a lot of damage. And I think he's about to go down. Well, he survived for one more shot. The, the Basante reloads. Yes, I'm afraid that happened. But the Basante is now one shot. So if we can put a round near him, he should be able to expire. The good news is we're two up on the enemy. We're pushing them back on the east side of the map. And they have retreated now on the west side. It looked like they were doing well. But as I said, it may look like that, but it wasn't. They are now in retreat. Got a G2 there using the uh, walls of that uh, road to try and protect him. Well, bit of splash. 71 hit points. He didn't keep moving like... It looked like he was going to keep moving. He didn't. But he did get the stun assist off that as well. 374. Still two down. There's an IKB up there with very low hit points. And there's one of the enemy arties. They've got an S51 and a ring 15550. Oh, that's another good shot. 241, a direct hit. I think it hit the hull of the S51, which, of course, is a heavy tank. But that IKB is definitely a one-shot or a splash kill, actually. And he's likely to go down very shortly. We fire the round in. And he goes down to his last few hit points. We get the last hit point from one of our teammates. Yes, because the T23E3 got the kill shot. And now there's only four enemies left. And they are being squeezed. In at the center of the map, there's three enemy tanks in close proximity. And the RT, well, he's back in the corner at 8-0 somewhere. The charioteer is trying to make a escape, but it's likely he's going to take a big hit. He's just sitting there on the other side of the slope. The Inyaran's dialing in. Right amount of lead, that's it. Good. He, he actually got damage and stun. But it's the stun that counts. It slowed the guy down and made him an easy kill. Now he's trying to get the kill on the SU-130 PM. But the SU's got that big alpha. And he just wipes the guy out. And now it's just the enemy RT. Who gets wiped out very quickly indeed. By the T-23 E3. And the game is over. That was a very good game by Lin Yarin in the S51. It seemed that he was working in tandem with his teammate in the S51. And they were both absolutely slamming the enemy one after the other. Um, Lin Yarin didn't get any kills at all. But boy, did he get a lot of damage on the enemy. He got his first ace tanker in that game. Yes, you can tell it's the first ace because he got the scrolls underneath. You only get that the first time. So congratulations on your first ace in the S51. He also got a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits in that game. He managed to get 10. And he got a confederate as well, for hitting more of the enemy than anyone else in his team. At least six tanks subsequently damaged and killed by other teammates. And the fact of the matter is, you look at that sheer number, every one of those counts towards the confederate. 
And yes, that is a lot. So he certainly guaranteed that he was going to get the Confederate out of that one. His win eight, 1,916. And so that is very good indeed. Let's have a look at team score. He didn't get the highest damage in the game. That went to the SU-130 PM on our team. We got a high caliber for 4,549 hit points of damage. Second highest damage went to the enemy Passante with 4,280. And the third highest damage went to the Type 57. Yeah, one of the new tanks. He got 2,221 hit points. We can see here that um, Linyarin, actually he was uh, using Anonymize there, actually managed to get 1,737 hit points in the S-51 and, of course, picked up that Confederate. And, uh, yes, that uh, IKB-90 managed to get a tank sniper out of the game. So, when it came to kills, we can see Lin Yarin's way down the table because, of course, he didn't get any kills at all. But, uh, as I said, if you don't get the kills, you get them as com uh, head counting towards the Confederate, and that is sometimes more valuable for RT. To, to hit more of the enemy to guarantee that you are going to get the bonus, even if your team loses. In this team, they didn't lose, but he still hit a huge amount of the enemy. The highest number of kills turned out to be the s 130 pm and the Jagdpanthers Phi. They both got five kills each. Four kills went to the Scorpion on the enemy team, and two kills went to the T23E3, the P43 Tour, and on the enemy team there by Sante and also their IKB-90B. When it came to base XP, he's second on the table. So at least he got high on one of the, uh, the tables. And the highest base XP was the SU-130PM again, down to the massive amount of damage, massive number of kills. 1,475 base experience points went to him. 1,066 went to Linyarin. And in fact, they were the only two players who managed to get over a thousand base in the game with the next highest coming up behind was in fact the Bisonte with 787. It's quite surprising that it happens to be the top scorer on the enemy team who actually gets the third highest base in the game. But anyway, it was a good game. Let's have a look at detail. 14 shots fired, so he really did expend as much ammunition as he could to get the hits, and he did get hits with virtually every round that uh, he fired. There's very few rounds that were wasted. In fact, I don't think any of them were. He got six direct hits on the enemy, so accuracy is working. Didn't get any penetrations, but he did get 12 splash, damage of 1,737, all of it at more than 300 meters. He damaged 10 of the enemy, killed none, but that, as I said, helps towards the Confederate. 257 hit points of damage assist, but look at this, 2,196 hit points of stun assist of 12 stuns, and that's where he got the ace tanker, the combined damage being just under 4k of combined damage. Yes, yeah, so it really did make a difference having all that stun. He didn't waste those shells. He made sure those shells did something good for him. And in fact, many times he hit the enemy, got the stun, and then the enemy tank was wiped out. So he picked up all the rest of the damage as stun assist. On a premium count, he actually earned a profit of 40,219 credits from that game. And he also took away 6,396 experience points after completing a mission and events as well for 3,198. So yes, what a great game. And just goes to show Lin, Ryan, Lin Yaren is getting better and better at playing these RTs. He's, uh, he's certainly focusing on what makes ace tankers. And of course, when you make ace tankers, you get to the top of the table, you get a lot of damage, you get a lot of credits, a lot of XP. And sooner or later, your RTs really do decide who wins the battle. Because of course, it, the RT player can have a dramatic effect on any game provided they put in enough effort to stun the enemy and make the enemy an easy kill for their teammates. So a great game there for Lin Yaren. Congratulations, first ace. If you enjoyed that replay, please give this video a like. Do subscribe to our channel. Leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm. And thank you for watching.